Why don't you cut your hair? What do you mean, why don't I cut? Because it looks great. Because <laughs> it looks freaking dope, bro. That's why. I feel like you're just trying to just... You could have just stopped either, there. I'm either trying save, really hard. Either trying to save money or... Yeah, I don't know. I like mean, there's a there's gonna be a reason why you cut it. Like, and I wonder what right. that reason is gonna be. Like, Dude, one hundred percent. That's what I tell my dad. My dad always asks me. He's like, "When are you gonna cut your hair?" And I'm like, "There's gonna be something. There's gonna be some something. I know it'll be the reason." And that's when I'll something do it. something will something will happen where you'll have short hair or shorter hair or and it will be noticeable. Yeah, I don't know what it's gonna be, but something's gonna happen where I'm gonna go. Today's the day. Are you gonna you gonna meet somebody? Well, you know it helps because then the guy can pull it from behind, you know. <laughs> oh, oh, yay! Yay! <laughs> we're back, baby! Yeah, but, we're uh, back. Yeah. So oh. I've I've started recording stuff. So we're we're doing it now. We're live together. It's already started. We're live. It's okay. already started, Ryan. We're back together. This is what we've always dreamed of, isn't it? We, uh, I feel like we basically were just running a podcast anyway in the house. It was just, just chatting it up. I would be down to do a podcast with you. Well, that's what we're doing right now. You know, one of these days we have to hop on, you know, and collaborate on something. I know. One of these days we're going to figure out a time and a place. But, uh, I like sit down and, and just, you know, and just talk about stuff one of these days. You know? No, the, I like, uh, I like where you're at right now. It looks like you're in Harvey Weinstein's casting room. <laughs> it looks pretty good. <laughs> it's it looks corporate. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's an industrial fabric. You know, it gets stains out real easily on this fabric here. It's good color. Yeah, you look good. It's I look like I'm looking at a Calvin Klein ad. Thanks. You know, um, I still haven't gotten that check. Uh, I haven't oh, got yeah? that from Calvin, no. Nor oh, wait, from Netflix, either. Wait, yeah, were you actually in a Calvin Klein thing? You were, right? Um, or was it an alcohol thing? What did I see you in? <laughs> One of those <laughs> things. No, I've been... <clears throat> so, yeah, no, I've, I've done a lot of um, print and commercial modeling out here. I'm in L.A., um, and I have a print agency and a, and a commercial agency. And so I've done... Yeah, I've done a lot of alcohol stuff. There was one uh, Carvassier ad that went nice. like everywhere. It was oh, pretty yeah. cool. Like it was, it was, uh, it was in like Rolling Stone and like Vogue and like every every major magazine you can think of. But the coolest one is uh, it was on the back cover of Time magazine. Wow! And I only found this out because um, someone someone said it was at their dentist office. Nice. But the cover was Trump. Oh my God. And so, and so of wow. course it was face down because they yeah. didn't want to put it face up on the coffee table. Oh my God. So that's why I was like, and so I'm like, that's wow. Great. I was like, that's the best back cover you can be on. Yeah, that's everyone's, hilarious. Everyone's just going to put it face down on their coffee oh, table. Yeah, yeah what an opposite. <laughs> yeah, from Donald Trump to you, quite the opposite sides of the cover for sure. Yeah, you know, wow. but um, yeah. yeah I, think I, I think I saw you on like an in flight magazine. It was like a, it was an alcohol ad or something, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Possibly, yeah. I've done. Really I special. mean, I think I've done stuff for um, Bud Light and Blue Moon, and I don't know. I've done. I've done. It's hard to keep it really straight. You know, when you start off like modeling and stuff, you know, every little thing is so important, and every picture you have is just you know so valuable because it's part of your portfolio. But then when you actually start working. I, I don't know. I don't even, they don't even tell you, like you'd go in, you do the photo shoot or whatever. And they don't say, they don't tell you like where it's going to go or how it's going to, what magazine it's going to be in or your, right. your job is done. It's yeah. kind of like being a, a reality yeah. star. You might, you might end up on Netflix one day. Yeah. No one tells you sh shit. They just, here you go. Hey, yeah. here's your check. How did, how did you find out? Cause I found out a stranger DM'd me and it was just, like a, a graphic that was like upcoming Netflix shows and it said are you the one season one so how did you find out that we were going to be on Netflix oh man how did that how did I find out I think someone said I think it was you oh yeah it might have been me <laughs> yeah <laughs> me. 
<laughs> yeah, you were you were all about it. Um, oh yeah, you were like, get ready, baby, it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, we're fucking back, man. Yeah, man. Um, I was just, uh, I was just like, okay, that's neat. But I wonder, like, it, who, it, like, when they're actually gonna market it? Like, MTV is gonna probably say something, or, 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 or even just like the, are you the one, like. Twitter yeah. page or something like someone's gonna mention it like hey yeah. you know coming to a you know yeah. a streaming Maybe. service near you like no no one said anything like, yeah, yeah no email no call it's it reminds me of when our show actually came out the first time yeah like, no one, there was no advertising there was no I mean, it, it fits the whole theme of the actual show we didn't even know what the show was when we did it we showed up and they're like this is what the show is so everything is still kind of in that uh, in that special surprise regard. Yeah, we didn't even know what it was going to be called. Which again, it well, we we thought it was going to be called Ten for Ten. Remember that? Yeah. Oh yeah, we would every, cheers every week. Ten for ten. They cut ten all that ten. out. <laughs> no, they cut a lot out. But yeah, no, and it was like <laughs> a perfect ten for a minute. Yeah. And then we realized right away because season two, I think, right? They had um, the eleventh girl. Yeah. So it was like, oh, that's why they didn't go with 10 for yeah. 10. It makes sense. Yeah, the yeah. sequel, 11 for 11. They just keep going up one at a time. Yeah, it was so, and, you know, I want to reminisce real quick about the first time we met. Please. It was, <laughs> it's a, great, it was it's a that, great moment. It was a great moment. It was in that <laughs> hotel in, in Burbank, I think. Yep. Or, the Safari Inn. Yeah, and, you know, I was watching this show recently on, on Apple TV, the, the, the morning show. Yeah. And uh, I was watching with my mom back in, in Thanksgiving and she was, I was like, I recognize that hotel. I was <laughs> like, because they thought it was all over the episode. It was like every other scene was like, they were like, Safari in, Safari in. Yeah. I was like, I was like, we either stayed there or like right next to it or right across the street. From, but like, I remember that shit. That shit's iconic, I think, in my mind. Oh. Like it's burned in my mind somewhere. Yeah. Same. Because that was yeah. such a, a wild moment. I mean, first off, we, we they put us in the rooms and we had to do like, you know, the three hour long Scantron bubble sheet. Oh, dude, it was like hundreds of questions. Hundreds of questions and then abstract questions too, which is like, how do pictures of flowers make you feel? And you like, <laughs> I don't know, it makes me mad. Makes me mad. <laughs> yeah. I, dude, I, I think that we went through, we, I, I feel like we might've gone through more of an extensive psychological evaluation than any other season because we we also had the matchmakers yeah and like no one no one realizes that we had these matchmakers that we had to these like relationship therapists like psychologists that we interviewed with and then we took like all these tests and and then they came on the show yeah for like a matchmaker ceremony yeah they cut they all that they like <laughs> like they like they like laid it out they're like this is why your match to you and your match to you and like yeah. it broke down and then they just completely cut it in the oh, final yeah. part, like it doesn't matter nobody They're has any matter. interest in that part yeah nobody gave a shit about which was sweet for those psychologists to get a just a free flight out to hawaii yeah for nothing whatever they were uh, working on that show for for probably like six months before and then six and then a year later they realized they're not even on the show yeah and we also had, besides the, the matchmakers, we had the actual, like, psych evaluation, too. You remember that? Oh, yeah. He goes, I remember he's just, like, looking at me, like, <laughs> you're a smart kid. Yeah, so good. Just but You have a problem with authority. Oh, my God. I was like, okay. Yeah, uh, you get all that? Depends, I guess, you know. And I think it was one of those things where he just wanted to see how I would, you know, react or... Yeah. Basically saying, like, look, if you want to be on the show, you got to do as you're told. Right. Was like, yeah, okay. Sure, yeah. And I mean... No, yeah. but um, when we met, I remember we were in this room filling out more paperwork, paperwork, paperwork. Um, probably the papers that said, we own your soul forever. Oh, yeah. For sure. Uh, it's like, cool, you're going to be a part of this big, cool new production. I'll sign it. Uh, it's not like I have an entertainment lawyer at this point. You know, who, who's going to read all that i skimmed it yeah, yeah. I'm fucking boring but <laughs> we're joking around and you walk up and you're like hey you're good looking you'll be on the show yeah, I'm right. 
<laughs> and I was like, hey, you're pretty funny. You'll be on the show too. Oh yeah, I knew I knew immediately. I saw you and I'm like, there's no doubt this kid isn't making the show. This kid's a star. Yeah. And you, you are. We're looking at a star right here too. Well, Dude, it's like we're looking at the mirror. You really are like probably one of the funniest people. Well, you're one, one of like the funniest, funniest people, people I've ever I've ever met. <clears throat> For everyone watching this, for all all few of you i know the two all people do- gonna- for all dozen of you yeah who see this <laughs> you got to check out jj's stand-up man it's funny thank you Please. when you were out here I, it was such a tragedy for me personally when you left oh yeah because, yeah because i would love going to your stand-up shows like i, know, I, I was a you huge came fan to, you came to the comedy store and saw me in there in the in the, in the belly room up there that was nice yeah, man. Oh yeah, any any anything and everything for you, JJ. It's, yeah, you know because we we wrote some jokes together too. Uh, oh, we yeah, we wrote plenty of jokes. We sat in the closet and are you the one? <laughs> and we wrote jokes all night, and it was hilarious. All night. Oh was yeah, bad. like we were. I feel like we're still mic'd up at that point. They like they could, or I don't know. Like I don't think we were. Okay, that I was. Powerful. I think that's why it was so right like, liberating. Okay, yeah, because it was like, yeah, we can just say anything we want at this say point. Say whatever we want, no one's listening. Uh, and we were just on the floor, in the closet. In the closet. Making just horrifying jokes. Oh, yeah, very uh, dark, <laughs> dirty, great jokes. Great jokes. <laughs> do, you, do you remember any of those jokes? Oh, I remember <laughs> most of them. Oh, yeah, I could, I could recall most of them in my head, probably at this moment. But uh, they still probably should not be said out loud for other people. <laughs> no. No. Definitely. You know, sign up for JJ's OnlyFans and he'll be just releasing Yeah, exactly. All yeah, this will be Patreon. OnlyFans is where we'll do the jokes that uh, are just absolutely unokay. But <laughs> yeah, it's been seven years since we were in there. You look younger today than you did then. How do you, uh, how do, you do it, dude? How do you look like young Superman? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I don't know. Probably, I would. You know, people ask me like, "What do I do?" Sometimes I just say, "Drink lots of water and sleep in." Okay, sleep in water. Just get lots of sleep and drink lots of water. I think that um, I've probably aged quite a bit since then, but it's just slowly. It's like slowly catch. I, I like aged in ways that I can. Like my neck kind of hurts. Sure, sometimes. sure, right. The little, yeah, the little. Thing I got like, I got like gray. I like gray hairs. Ah, you call gotcha. Them. Looking distinguished. You're also a swimmer. You still swimming? I wish, man. All the gyms yeah. have been closed for like the uh, whole year. Right, right. Um, you, are you doing any sort of workout stuff? Yeah, a little bit. You know, I have a like a basketball court in the backyard, and oh, nice. You know, yeah, just I like basketball today. Basketball every day, dude. That's the way to do it. You just uh, you're just uh, getting warmed up for the Wizards. Oh yeah, we just got Russell Westbrook. It's wide open for me to join the team. Wide open, <laughs> wide open, baby. Dude, the Raptors are actually playing in Tampa this year, so that's fucking wild. So I'm gonna see some Raptors games. Okay, maybe, maybe you not. Know. Yeah, I mean, I think they're doing seating. They're gonna let people watch games and buy tickets and shit. Really? Yeah, makes. No I was sense. kind of a. I kind of thought it was neat when they did the virtual stuff because it made me feel like I was just in this future world. Um, what I, you know, what I wish though that they did was they didn't, I wish they didn't add the artificial crowd noise. Yeah. Like I really wanted to hear like the, you know, the, them talk shit to each other, the oh, breathing, yeah. the, the squeaking of the shoes. Like it, it's like a, it was going to be like a new experience. The first couple of games were like that. And I was like, this is really interesting. This yeah. is cool. It's different. Neo future like, athleticism. Dude. Yeah, it was fucking yeah. New Year's game, Ready Player One NBA game. It was pretty yeah. wild. Yeah, they yeah. had the people in the stands waving on the computer and shit. It was pretty fun. Yeah, and you got to like wonder like if they were told to just sit there and wave. Yeah, which is weird. Yeah. They can have like, because, you know, like for a reality show, for example, you know, everyone's everyone says like, oh, it's all scripted. And it's not because, you know, we're not talented enough as no. a collective no to pull that off like you take a bunch of kids and you see you give them scripts no way no. The professional actors you know but it definitely is produced yeah it's produced. uh yeah I, I put it like instigated they would instigate things yeah hey ryan do you think you could you know 
Oh like, yeah. Or hey, you think you could just like take Kayla over there and? Oh yeah. Uh sure. Yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah, got, yeah they'd be like, so you heard somebody said this about you, huh? So uh, that makes you pretty mad, huh? <laughs> like, yeah, I'm pissed. Yeah. You're like say it again, but 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 say who? <laughs> <laughs> just can you say? It really made me mad when when um what's that say when Ryan. <laughs> where's my dream journal oh the dream journal yeah that was the weirdest conflict storyline it got its own it's episode its... title like the title yeah. of the episode is like something's in journals and something yeah i think like, that's the beauty right. of 20 people on a show like that where it just goes in every direction because it's like you're worried about your dream journal i'm throwing money on bitches over here <laughs> <laughs> someone texted me <laughs> and they're like, hey, why did all the girls get so mad when JJ threw money on, on, <laughs> and I was like, what did I do oh, wrong? Oh, man. I was like, yeah. this is like seven years ago, first of all. <laughs> yeah, we were drunk. Nobody knows. We were just drunk the whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. I don't know, probably because there's a, when the camera is pointed at you, you got to, you know, it's for a reason. And yeah, people so get all, you know, turned on. The, the, the switch turns on when the camera's oh, on. Oh, yeah. Dude, which I'll never forget, my reunion, when, like the clip of me going off cursing and shit, that was because you're in the stands and it's going whatever and you just look at me and you do this. You go, turn it up. <laughs> so I just do. I immediately just start yelling and shit because I'm like, okay, yeah, Ryan's trying to pump it up. Make, let's make some good TV here. So yeah, that was, that was great. I'll never forget that. Oh, man. You know, I think what I'll do is post that poem I wrote for the for that one reunion we did. Yeah. Because I didn't don't, I don't think it got a very fair edit. Right. Um, yeah, you'll post the full thing. It was it was a decent poem. I'm not going to lie. I kind of liked it. I was asked to write a poem and I I did. And yeah. then they butchered it and made me look silly and I was like, yeah. "Okay, well, it's 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 unfortunate. I feel like I was, you know, every Thing that we did had kind of different set of producers and so there wasn't like a consistent right. thing but yeah whatever i mean you, every every story you need conflict every good story has conflict yeah um, yeah and you got to find it where you can get it i mean it's you know especially like something like a baby shower like how are you going to pull human conflict out of a baby shower it's supposed to yeah. just be a celebration of new life and instead it's like simone's throwing water and drinks on people and yeah. And, well, of course. And, I mean, they're not going to throw a special for fun just to no. see everybody have a good time. No. It's just shit about that. They want to see some problems. Yeah. It feed the beast. Get the you, eyeballs fed. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see them butcher your poem on TV. <laughs> it's right. It's true. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought it was just unnecessary that they did that. But, you know, whatever. I mean, I didn't produce the show. Um, I have produced shows since then, so I do understand that you do need, you, you need a through line, you know, you need yeah. a beginning, middle and end. And I thought the most fascinating thing when, when I was watching our show, when it first came out, I remember, which by the way, I've only seen it that one time when it first nice. came out, like Good. when we, yeah. when we live tweeted, that was it. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. After that, I was like, okay, I, I have like <clears throat> PTSD. I can't. Yeah. Uh, but at the time when I was watching, I thought it was very fascinating because they would show little clips and glimpses of people interacting because they were, and we knew what they, they were a perfect match, but like at the time, like they didn't have a storyline at all. Right. Like they showed like something about, you know, I don't know. It was like, like a moment between like, uh, like, uh, like Chris and Paige, like the only time they said anything to each other, the yeah. whole Show. And then they show that, like they highlight it, like it's an actual thing that's happening in the house when in fact that they didn't really talk at all. But, yeah. but they need to in order for there to be a consistent story. Like there needs to make sense why they were a match. So when people are watching these reality shows, they need to know that out of the hundreds of hours of footage, there's only like whatever, 20 or 40 whatever minutes that they can show. So every single second, is so crucial and it's just so valuable of airtime. So 
when you see something, you see people, two people interacting, you can almost guarantee that that is going to come back into play somehow. Yes, because every dude. story needs a beginning, middle, and end. Yeah. And a lot of things that happen on our show <clears throat> didn't really, like, play out, you right. know? Like, like a lot of the things, like, like Ethan, for example, had a lot of storylines that just never were never even touched on because they didn't quite pan out or yeah. fan out the way that yeah. you would need for, to produce that story. Yeah. So, you know, when you're watching, you're getting just glimpses and you're getting a produced show that is manufactured to tell a story. Oh, 100%. Whether it's, whether it's the actual story that happened or if it's just one that is entertaining. Like, either way, it needs to have a beginning, middle, and end. So. Yeah, 100%. I mean, that's the same with TV and movies, any scripted thing, and everything, where it's like, you know, if there's a watch in the beginning of the movie, like, the watch is going to come back later. So, it's, yeah. yeah, in our shit, if there's any interaction with people... You got to be like, oh, they must be setting something up. Because, yeah, it's not yeah. just random, you know? They really want you to, like, yeah, it's... It, yeah, it's like, have you ever heard of uh, Chekhov's gun? Check out what? Che <laughs> Chekhov, um, he was, like, this this Russian, old Russian, like, play, like, theater critic or something. I, uh -huh. I'm i going to get, like, butchered over these facts. But it, something along the lines of he went to go see a play and there was this gun hanging over the fireplace okay and like this this rifle or something and and then at, by the end of the play it, it never came back into it never came back into the picture at all and right. he was so mad he wrote this like scathing review of the, of the <laughs> play saying you can't put a gun on the wall in act one unless it goes off in act three like or act two sure. or whatever like sure. you can't show someone a detail that it doesn't pay off because the viewer is expecting that to mean something. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and so, yeah, if you're watching a show and they're showing you some people doing anything, writing, flirting, talking, whatever, there's yeah. a reason for it. It's going to come back. Um, and whether or not it's the actual case. Is well, I mean, I, I had the lucky, uh, you know, I had the lucky position of being the comic relief for the show. Yeah. So, like, I was an easy throw to at any scene. You yeah. Know? The real question is, who wants pizza? Ha, 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 ha. Like, <laughs> that's, that's half my lines on the show, which is perfect. I mean, that's, that's what I was going for. I mean, I'm just the funny dude. I, I'm fine with that. I like just making jokes. That's my whole life. You are funny. Hell yeah. Um, so it's like, it, it all worked out pretty good for me. I slipped, yeah. in, I slipped into the, uh, you know, the sensitive, nice guy right role. but again, that's kind of who i am yeah and that's how that cat is who i am yeah but like, like you remember when we were in the hotel and shit we pretty much all met like a mirror version of ourselves like there was another comedian there was like another tall black dude like wes there was like pretty much close similars to each of us so we yeah. were each like filling a role it was like the end of the race for that role and we each nailed that position so yeah it's you know it's it's definitely well crafted they don't just like throw a handful of p interesting people in a, in a house it's like no interesting people that can hopefully represent so, like every single person who could possibly watch the show yeah in their, within their target demographic yeah yeah so they're really just trying to get every different audience on board a little bit somehow yeah because it's all about relatability it's like oh, i want to watch yeah. something that i want to see the person that i can relate to going through stuff that i can relate to yeah. so i can root for them or root against them i mean either way you want everyone to be likable even if they're like throwing fits and throwing bottles because you like you, even if they're like mean and nasty and, and crude that's still they need to be likable in a certain way. You need to yeah. like them for that. You uh -huh. need to like the fact that they're an asshole. Yes. If they're an asshole. Yeah. They need to be like a likable douchebag if they're going to be the douchebag. Yeah. Not, not a douchebag. You can just be like, oh, I don't oh, like yeah. you, you have to have redeeming qualities to like make it through this shit. Like, it yeah. Doesn't, yeah, it doesn't matter who it is on the show, how crazy you are. There's got to be some draw where it's like, even if it's just the train wreck idea. Where it's like a fucking dumpster fire. It's like I can't look away from this yeah. shit show. And with you, it's like we got this Twilight extra here. <laughs> you look, you look like a vampire and the werewolf combined. Like you look like Edward and Jacob had a baby. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna star in a show coming up here called um, uh, 
the the Were Witch Diary Chronicles. Oh wow, really? Yeah, the Were Witch Diary Chronicles. I'm a um I'm caught between three worlds. Holy shit. That sounds <laughs> amazing. Yeah, I'm I'm a witch and a werewolf and a vampire hybrid crossbreed and but all I want to do is go to prom. And this is real? <laughs> it needs to be. It needs it sounds to be. like I was, yeah, I was gonna be like, yeah, this is coming out on the CW soon. The Werewitch but, Diary Chronicles. Oh yeah. I mean, speaking of shows and us being on Netflix, you were already on Netflix. I was. You're a movie I've, star. I I'm an actor. Um I've done a lot out here, you know, acting and modeling and producing and podcasts and I love uh, I love this business, man. I mean, Are You the One was my first major production. It was a lot of fun. Being on yeah. TV is fun. Everyone knows. Oh Everyone yeah, loves That's being fun. on TV. Are you kidding yeah. me? You, sh you show some person. You you point the camera at them at a at a baseball game, and they're up on the Megatron. Tell them. Tell me that's not like the the most fun they've ever had. Like oh yeah, they go crazy. Yeah, being on TV is a whole lot of fun. But I think more than that, it's telling stories. It's being it's being able to be creative. And this industry is just so exciting it's fast paced and anything can happen it's such a magical thing um and i've always liked that ever since i was a kid i always loved theater and improv and um i mean yeah the sensitive one you know but i also played sports so it was like i was kind of he can you know, do it all yeah, i can do it all but no i did um <clears throat> i ended up finding um some good representation and uh, auditioning for stuff and i landed a, a movie called hashtag reality high which was great Netflix. I watched it. It was wonderful. You yeah, did? Yeah, you had a lot of scenes in it. You had a lot of scenes. You popped up a lot. It so, was fun. It was fun. I played a a, lo a likable, a lovable douchebag named uh -huh. Vinny. <laughs> yeah, you know, everyone, like Vinny. everyone knows of Vinny. You yeah. know, everyone's got a Vinny friend, you know? Vincenzo. Yeah, you're Vincenzo. That's right. Yeah. So, you know, um, that was a lot of fun. What, uh, what's, what's the biggest difference between you know, being an entertainer on a reality set versus, you know, a movie production set? Probably, oh gosh. I mean, it's very different. I mean, yeah, you're in, in, a, in a, you know, you, you kind of know what your job is that day on a movie set. Right, yeah. You know the scene, you know the purpose. And like, if it's a comedy thing and you have, it depends on the director, but you can maybe get away with, you know, doing some improv stuff. A lot of my stuff on that movie was improvised. So that was really, it was really a lot of fun. Yeah. But you know what your job is that day. You go in, you're like, here's my purpose. And everyone treats you like fucking royalty when you're on a, when you're on a movie set. Oh, sure. Reality show, you're treated like a you're, cattle. Yeah, party. you're a prisoner. You're on a field trip, basically. Yeah, and they just Stay tell you. Stay in line. To, Don't talk to me. Shut other. up. I no, shut up. Up. look at each other shut the fuck up <laughs> yeah. yeah dude so <clears throat> it's very different i mean the atmosphere is similar in the sense that there's a lot of moving parts there's a lot of people doing jobs that you don't even they don't even you're looking over and they're just like rigging some thing yeah. together yeah, and, yeah you know they're like working all just to to make the final product which is just to tell a story um that's entertaining in some way. Um, but on a, on a film set, it's, it's, I like, I don't know. It's, that's a good question. It's, but they are very different. Um, gosh, re being on a reality show, like, I suppose I would do it again if it was something like, like the amazing race or like the challenge or something where sure, you could sure. go and be yourself and have fun and, and play yeah. games and stuff. But uh, I've definitely, it's, it's hard to be, because on a reality show, you're playing like the role of yourself. Yeah, just like tuned up, just yeah. 110%. You're, like playing, right? you're playing you, but like a you that you want to be seen as. Yeah, uh, you or, if it was Instagram the whole time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. And that can get a little exhausting. And and, um, and since it's always, it's 24-7, there's no like, I feel like there's no, I don't know what happened to like labor laws during yeah. the reality show like if you think about it like we were working oh, 20 like hours a day. yeah like oh, there was no was... there was no like lunch no you know or like <laughs> they're like make a grilled cheese sandwich asshole yeah like your downtime is whenever you stop talking and go to bed 
Yeah, it was our Pretty downtime much. was us playing chess and shoot the moon. Those two games. That was us. I love that. I yeah, didn't you take it home? The shoot the yeah. moon? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what happened to it. Dude, oh. also, even just the concept of a reality show where the goal is love, that's a weird thing. Because yeah. you're you're telling a group of people to like find this emotion that is supposed fall in love yeah fall in love do it <laughs> and it's so funny because it's like you can't force people to fall in love but you can create a big mansion with no clocks and no responsibility and no money and no phones and it's like are they gonna fuck it's like what else are they gonna do of course they're gonna fuck yeah. we had one phone the bat phone yeah and like you're not supposed to use that shit yeah you pick it up when it's like, hey, um, just want to let you know the house is flooded with shit water again. Yeah, yeah. remember some people would get in trouble. They'd be like, people are calling their houses from the phone. What are you guys doing? Which is so curious because I actually, I don't know. I had no problem not talking to Oh, I family. prefer it. I wish yeah, I was, was doing that right now. Oh, it was great. Uh, it was the best. I loved it. Then yeah. you had like Paige had like a boyfriend. Yeah, or something, and then like secret phone. She had a cell phone. A secret cell phone. Yeah. The news is loose, folks. Exclusive. Yeah, behind the scene, backstage, the yeah, people. There's so much that happened that people will never see or know about. Well, you know, you can't say never because, like, who knows? Maybe they'll make like a "Are you the one behind the scenes?" show right. and just right. totally fuck uh, us again. One. Yeah. Are you the one still? And we're all like 40, 50. Yeah, are, you, are you still the one? Yeah. <laughs> Are you still? Are you one of them? Are you, yeah. People are getting X'd off. They're like, that person's not the one anymore. <laughs> We're no longer the one. We're no longer the one. Yeah, everybody's groveling. Please, please, I want to be the one still. I want to be the one. I want to be one of them. Yeah, which is basically what this podcast is begging. Yeah. Please, I know, right? please continue to look at us for two seconds. Yeah, well, yeah, JJ, you, you, no one was more excited than, than you. You were, <laughs> I remember you texted me, you're like, yeah, man, I'm still a junkyard dog. I fucking love this shit. Yeah, I'm right. Yeah, that's why it's so funny to me. I can like, imagine everybody else is mortified and they have like families and kids and shit. And I'm like, yeah. I got nothing to lose, baby. I'm still just rocking out. And it's like, I'm, we're all like, like, we're like, this is seven years ago. We're all like in our thirties now, you know, yeah. like back in that, like we were kids relatively to what we are now. I mean, I'm yes. sure we're still going to grow and, you know, yeah. uh, you know, but someday, you know, like I'll get married and have kids and yada, yada. I'm sure that I'll, you know, cocoon into some grand change. I feel like people change a lot when they become parents, but right. so I kind of feel somewhat similar, but still that was a long time ago, man. We were different people. Oh, definitely. We young. Yeah just doing stupid stuff and now people are watching this show like kids who were too young to watch our show <laughs> yeah. are now watching our show in like high school <laughs> and going and and a lot of them think it's happening like right now yeah they do yeah i get like i get like dms which are i'm trying to like reach out to fans and and, and express my appreciation for them watching and supporting us but for sure it's still hard because i'm like gosh you know this was this is a hard experience. Like it was emotionally draining. I remember getting back. I had like a decompression period of like a week where I just like didn't do anything. I like played like Bioshock for like a week and I just like yeah. didn't talk to anyone about it. They always ask, hey, Ryan, what happened? Run the show. You just <laughs> come you got back. Like I don't, I get can't, I don't. Right. Yeah. Don't it's like, you'll see. You'll, uh, it was 24 yeah, seven for like six weeks. Dude, I would, yeah, I remember waking up. I was in my little corner bed by the window and I'd wake up at like 2 p.m. and there'd be a guy over me with the camera. And I'm like, is this the shot? Yeah, is this what you're going for? <laughs> 2 p.m. Uh, yeah, like, unbelievable. Yeah, man. I remember the first time, man, I woke up and the camera was in my... Freaked me out, man. Freaked me out because I wasn't quite awake yet. Like, it was right, like... Right. Yeah, dude, like... And you gotta... And then, like, you know that that's not good for TV, so you just, like, kind of like, oh... <laughs> I mean, Let me, um, <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> waking up. Um, Dude, every know? day waking up in that house was awesome because you'd forget for a second before you were like awake. You'd wake up and then you'd remember you're on TV. You'd go, oh, fuck. I remember 
probably the worst time I ever woke up. I actually chose to sleep out uh, in a hammock okay. under the stars. Okay. And I woke up and it was just raining hard. It was like <laughs> four in the morning. Yeah. Was the you also, I think uh, I can't remember who it was, but someone else was out there with me and they went inside because it was raining and they left me out there in the nice. rain. Birthday for the show. That's what the, that's what it was. This is the spirit of the show. It's like, hey, yeah. it's a, yeah, it's a fucking party, man. If it's raining on you, good. That's just what happens. Yeah, you saw aliens out there too. So, yeah, that was interesting. That was curious. I, I concluded that. So Kayla and I, I don't know, no one really heard this story, but Kayla and I uh, were out there. I was showing her some some constellations and stuff because I love like astronomy and stuff and sky watching and and we. St- she's like, "What's that? What's that up there?" And it was this light that just started glowing super bright. It was like right above us. And then it like dimmed and like kept going. I was like, that's very weird. I'm starting to think that it probably was like a satellite catching a reflection off the sun. Right. But what I can't explain, and because it happened a few times, it was like, it happened like over and over, it was probably like six or seven times. So I'm thinking, okay, there's a lot of satellites, maybe at just the right time of night. And there's very clear skies out there. So you could see everything. I was like, probably just satellites. But the one thing I can't explain is I remember there were three of them. Because I remember Kayla was like, look, there's three of them. There's three of them right next to each other, like a triangle. And once they got right above us, they split into three different directions. Oh, wow. And and satellites don't do that. So, so yeah, that was something I still can't explain. Like, like I'm probably, you know, maybe it's explainable, maybe it's not. I've always had like a like a quasi interest in like UFOs and, and unidentified like aerial phenomena. I think it's really fascinating stuff because, you know, it's a big mystery. You know, you got these lights flying around in the sky and like, what is it? We don't know. And anything we don't know is fascinating because everyone seems to know everything nowadays in this, right. in this world. So, and, but yeah, that was a really weird, I remember when during, I remember we, Ryan Devlin asked me during a matchup ceremony. He's like, so <laughs> you and Kayla spent some night. Yeah, watching the stars and maybe something, maybe something else. And I'm like, Oh my god, maybe something. Else. Okay, all right. What and I'm standing up there in the matchup ceremony, like, dude, Devlin. His questions were the best because, yeah, the concept of having a host like that who's just gets free range to ask you the most personal shit with you know with no consequence because he would show up and yeah. he'd be like, so you guys fucked last night, and you're like, whoa, dude, who's who said that? Who's talking to you? Yeah, it's it's a pretty weird thing to have to just be like super open with this dude we don't know, but we just accept he's our, you know, he's our host. So give him everything. And he would never even really talk with us or No. He would come <laughs> in, he would do his job, act like our friends, and then leave. Like there was no, it was very impersonal. And he was doing his job. Yeah, he did a good job. He did a good job. It was just, it was just very, also, like, we didn't know half the time what the hell was going on because it was a brand new show. Like, we didn't know, we didn't know what this show was or what, how it was going to look on TV or what they were going to use or how or why. I mean, it was like everything. Like, we had challenges and ceremonies and a truth booth. What the hell is that? And then you have, after the truth booth, you go to another place and do other things and, (laughs) honeymoon suite and, yeah and you vote for people and you match up with people and you take turns guys and girls remember that don't forget that one yeah, like, so much going on so and we've many good things and everyone was telling you know back home it's like oh you should have done this i would have done that and i'm like yeah try it having never seen it before yeah like, we yeah none of us could prepare for any of this we didn't know what any of it was they didn't even for me it was my buddy uh was on the real world and recommended me so i was talking with Bjorn and murray about being on the real world Okay. And then, and that tech, that casting process took forever. And I was just like over it. I was like, I knew I'm gonna like move to Denver and get a job or go to LA and do theatrical work. Like I've always wanted to try, but uh, it's, it's kind of over at this point. Cause they didn't really get back to me, but then they called me up and they're like, Hey Ryan, we got a different show for you. How would you like to go to a, like a, tropical paradise with a bunch of sexy girls for the chance to win money yeah i was like yeah 
Like, what's the catch? The catch is we own your soul. Like, I didn't say that. But it was, uh, I was like, yeah, sure. And But, yeah, it was very in the dark. It was like, why not? Um, and now how many seasons are there? They did eight. Eight? Are they doing more or is that it? I have no idea. They're not telling me shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, JJ, what's the scoop? What's the insider? We should do. Um, but lighthearted entertainment, you know, for all they they did for us, you know, you gotta you gotta hand it. They weren't doing it for us; they were doing it to make a good show. But you know, it definitely opened up some doors and opportunities. Oh, sure. I'm super um, grateful for the opportunity. I am grateful for that, and uh, and they they really have a cool open door policy. Like I've gone to them with. Um, different ideas about new on non-scripted shows because i want to i want to after being on this side of it on that side of it you're like seeing it all hey wait a second i can make this yeah <laughs> it takes a you know a good idea a good crew good casting and you got yourself a non-scripted show so i've had a few ideas i've gone in with them to talk about and just maybe someday i'll you know be able to actually make a show because that'd be fun why not but um <laughs> yeah. I you know, there's there's awesome. other shows that I did. Real quick, I'll I'll drop it. Oh, please name drop. I did, uh, I did um, this show called My Dad X. Okay. And, and that's on Hulu. Okay. And uh, I play. There's like, it's this fun like, you know how there's shows about vampires and werewolves and all that. Well, yeah. this one's kind of about like zombies. But it's Got not really it. zombies. It's almost like a, it's a comedy, a romantic comedy about this yeah. kid who comes back to life. A uh, romantic you know, zombie. A Zomcom. Zom oh, Zomcom. <laughs> it's a Zomcom. Why we get uh, Fox, baby? That's right. And I play, uh, I play the guy who is in the love triangle with the girl. It's me, the girl, and the and the and the zombie kid. Okay. Um, play, played by uh, Ryan Lee, and then the girls, uh, Catherine Hughes, and we're all friends. Ryan Lee and I became really close friends after that, and so that was a lot of fun. Um, uh, and that's on Hulu. Went for a season, and then Awesomeness TV, who produced it, got bought out by Viacom. We were about to do season two, and then they, they got bought out, and they just kind of, like, cleaned house. Oh, um, so what are you going to do? But then, yeah, and then I did um, – I had a good scene in uh, this movie called The Wedding Year. came out last year um, with uh, – um, I was in a scene with, uh, with uh, Patrick Warburton. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, he was – um, and Kristen Johnston, they were just amazing to work with. Um, for those who don't know, Patrick Warburton's like the, yeah, that's right. He's, you know, he played Kronk. Yes, that's a good impression of him. Yeah, he yeah. plays the Kronk in Ember's New Groove, and uh, he's on Seinfeld, and he does, like, um, Family Guy. He's, like, Joe and Family Guy. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and I've done some pilots here and there. I'm, I'm possibly p filming my own here soon, which okay. there's a character in there named JJ. Fingers crossed. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, stars will align, huh? Yeah, maybe we will. Maybe um, those will shoot across. There's the one thing I keep looking over here because I'm thinking I have my journal from the oh show in there God. somewhere. Bring the fucking journal over here. Give me a second. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on. That. That's a fucking artifact. I know. <laughs> it's a that's a that's a piece of TV history. Be. Dude, Sorry, speaking of which, bro, like uh, my uh, my buddy's texting me right now in DC, who's watching the show, and uh, literally like two seconds ago, he goes, "It's so good." And then the the last text is Ryan's journal, LOL. Beautiful. <laughs> oh my god! As you're pulling it out, it's getting talked about. I have like a whole. What did somebody hide it again? What's going on? Oh my god! I know it's around here somewhere. <laughs> it's I have like this big bag full of all my old journals. Nice. And I should have been prepared for this. Oh. We want to see the good stuff. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, hell yes. Uh, 
Oh. Let's see this bad boy. Oh. Sorry about that. All right. This shit should be in a museum. <laughs> well, you know, um, it definitely got its own. Yeah, there it is. Wow. Jesus, the journal that launched a thousand ships, huh? <laughs> uh, Holy crap. Uh, yeah, could you could you please read us something from your time in the house? Read us we read us part of a dream you had when you were in the Are You the One house. You know, I have so the hold on, my this dream journal. You gonna come back with a wizard cap on? <laughs> yeah, right. And a pipe. And yeah. Just... Time for oh nice. So this was the this was the dream journal. This is, you know, I'd wake up and if I yeah. had a pretty cool dream, I'd write it down, you know, because it's it's pretty Oh wow. I haven't really looked through this. Yeah, just just pick a random page and read us like a few lines. What what year did we film it? Uh, 2013, end of 2013. Was it really? Okay. Yeah, because it was right before Thanksgiving. 2013. Yeah, it was... Uh... Oh man. Okay, let's see. Um, can't read my own handwriting. You know, when you wake up in the morning and you yeah, uh, just, yeah, you scribble real quick. You don't want to forget it. Stop censoring yourself. I want to hear. I am. <laughs> okay, well, so this was, we were there in October 2013. Was that right? Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, so my, all right, so this is October 1st, 2013. Uh, my first nightmare in a while. Ah. Uh, in, an, in an area unfamiliar, rural woods and a swamp. I was threatened by a guy with a gun. Oh, wow. Um, I, I took three fish and got away. Oh, my God. Yeah, in my apartment, um, a game of chess with Bailey. She was actually my ex-girlfriend who she was on the show. Yeah, she showed up and then uh, she, she kissed someone else, I believe, huh? I don't... Uh, you don't, you don't want to <laughs> say anything. That's fine. I mean... <laughs> he's out there like getting married and stuff i don't right, want right. to yeah we don't need to uh we don't need uh yeah um, skeletons sure. other people's sure. skeletons of course um in my apartment a game of chess with bailey um the pieces could transform and the uh pawns would light up like little lanterns when moved uh, i don't like dreaming of her but uh i spoke of balance and harmony saying i am the chaos and she is the order, and I miss her still. Wow, and then she showed up. Yeah. So that's a little foreshadowing there. You know, what's so interesting about dreams is like a lot of times they, they manifest themselves somehow. You know, it's either a coincidence or it's where, and you can find meaning in anything. Yeah. But it is kind of uncanny sometimes when you write something down and then it happens and you're like, no, 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 this isn't just deja vu. Like I wrote this shit down, you know? Um, I had a dream I was on a reality show before we did Are You The One. Really? Oh, yeah. And it was, like, pretty vivid. And and then it feels like it literally came come true. So I was like, that's crazy. Well, you had a dream that, you, that I'll never forget. You told oh, yeah. me that. You, yeah, you were a magician. You had a cape and everything. And you were playing in, like, some fancy venue. It was, like, a restaurant slash, you know, cool stage type thing. And yeah, you were a fucking star magician. And I'll, I'll always remember that. I just remember, yeah, you tell me, you know, like, you were killing it, man. <laughs> you were the magic again. We made Are You The One reappear out of thin air. So, oh, ch all right, check it out. Um, huh, this is, this is so crazy. Oh my God, I didn't realize, dude. <laughs> 
I have, okay, so, so here's stuff. It's late. I'm drunk. Jess and Shanley won the challenge. <laughs> yes. Stuff like this. Look, this is, this is John Jacobs. You Holy remember this? Shit. What the fuck? We need a look. Oh my God. Yeah. I have some writing in there. You do. You wrote in the journal. We need uh, to learn to teach better. Wow. I'm so deep, dude. I'm so deep. Fuck yes, dude. This is like the fucking Dead Sea Scrolls. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. This is this is these are words from from JJ. Um, the more directions we're given, the easier it is to get lost. Damn. Ooh, bars. Uh. <laughs> oh my god. A good one, please. Uh. Oh yeah, give it to me. Women are bad at math because it involves equality. Oh, yeah, I remember that. That's a hilarious line. Yeah, not too good now. A little too sexy now, even though it's a joke, but still. Oh, man. God, I remember great, man. Look at this. Ten for, this one was called 10 for 10. Ten for, yeah, we have, we have physical proof that the show was called 10 for 10. The goal, look at this. <laughs> oh, my God. The goal is to match up, match these couples up, and we have 10 opportunities. If we do, we split a million dollars. Dude, wrote it down. Cool. This is like the day <laughs> we learned about it. Um, yeah. And. Dude, remember like the first day or two, we took it way too serious of like a puzzle? <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, remember that? I, I, just, I just glanced down and I saw a sentence right here. It says, um. Uh, I I was in the tiebreaker for second place and I couldn't recognize Britney's tits. Damn. <laughs> that's, that's how you find love right there. This is, uh, and then look, we have, I was writing like, like winners of the first challenge and all that stuff. And then like yes. someone, someone wrote in here right there. I don't know who that was. Dear Ryan, today I miss my family. I miss my brother and my sister. I miss my dog. Uh, all this stuff and then here's look at this. Paige the blonde. blonde dude these are like fucking letters from war this is yeah like dude there's oh. Amber wrote in here um, oh this is John Jacobs right here look at that <laughs> John and Ryan and we're holding hands <laughs> dude <laughs> we look like twins in that picture oh my god look at this look at this Here's our first matchup. Right here. Wow. Holy shit. And I'm, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that I wrote these on these loose leaf pages. Yeah. Because my journal was stolen at the time. Ah, so those are, those are special pages. These are inserts. Amazing. Wow, dude. That's, that's hilarious. We literally have the whole thing chronicled right here. That's so crazy. I haven't looked at this thing in, a long time, years, it's years. Pristine. It's still perfect. And then we have, oh man. I, Cause I would, I would give my journal out to whoever, I was like, Any, anyone who wants to write something down can like, if wow. you wanna. First mistake right there. Yeah, but then, <laughs> oh my God. So here, oh wow. Okay, so here I wrote down, um, Oh my God. Yeah. You wrote about all of us, right? About all of you. Yeah. yeah was like, I was like, oh, okay, God. this is a lot of people. I was like, this is like 19 yeah. other people that I have to like live with and learn about and be able to talk coherently about because they, they would, they'd be like, okay, you just met this guy. And then like two days later, they'd be like, so tell us how do you feel about this person or that person? And I'm like, who? Yeah. I haven't met them yet. Really. You know, like right. there's a lot of us, uh, but here's, You want to hear that about you? Oh, of course I do. Okay. Uh, John Jacobs. Because you're the only one who had two names. Hell yeah. Yeah, everybody on the show would call me John Jacobs, which was hilarious. <laughs> John Jacobs. That's my name out there. Um, oh my God. A okay, John Jacobs. A character for sure. Oh, hell yeah. He loves, loves to make him laugh. His costumes are great. And he knows when to pull the girls aside for a one-on-one. -on -one. And even though he denies it, him and Simone are totally in love. Oh, that's cute. 
<laughs> that is cute. I know the right time to pull him away for a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, you do. Oh, look, Je Jessica. We haven't we haven't had a chance to talk much. I think she's more reserved now after what happened the first night. She got sloppy drunk and smashed a pizza in my face. <laughs> it's all good. The, it's all good though. She seems really sweet. Isn't that who you went? Was she your match? Or who? No. What? Yeah, Jess was my was my yeah. perfect match, and uh, and that's the I remember the first night she got. We all got really drunk the first night, oh. and but she. I remember we, we baked a pizza and it was like a little overcooked. So we would th we threw it around the house like a Frisbee. Okay. And then, and then she, she took it and she smashed it in my face. And okay. then, and then the next day she was just so like, she was so scared that she did something dumb or something. I remember after that, she was like super quiet and reserved and like really, we really flew under the radar quite yeah. a bit for, for that show. But yeah, Jess was great. Honestly, people ask me like, Oh, you know, your perfect match like did you find your perfect match and like in another world like i would have totally married jessica like jess was personality wise and she's a beautiful beautiful woman um i was like she's like i i wish if i could go back and do it again i wish i got to know her more she yeah. was really cool she's a cool person but she's you know you can't like you can't wish to go back and do things differently because then everything would change. Like she's, yeah. she's like has kids and stuff and a family now and they're doing great. They're so cute. Um, so obviously like, you know, she has a good life, you know, yeah. and I wouldn't change that. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, she was, I mean, I don't know how they did it, but she was a really, like I would, I would be lucky to find someone like her. I think someday. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. she's a superstar. I remember. Yeah. It was, it was either the first or second night in the house. Everybody's wasted. And she, like, I'm talking to her, and she's like, she's like, uh, she's like, I'm scared you might be my perfect match. <laughs> oh man! I know. Why was he scared? Right? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, oh, uh, the first day I remember. The first day I didn't even know. I didn't. That was just you know you're just meeting people. Yeah. And I go up to Paige, like, hey, I'm Ryan. She's like, hey, I'm Paige. And no offense, but there's no way you're in my match. Ooh. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, okay. Yeah, Brittany kind of gave me that, too, immediately. Yeah, <laughs> she's like, no. Nah. It's not, you're not my match, broski, but. <laughs> <laughs> I love Brittany. I love Brittany. I love you. Um, I love Amber and Ethan. You know, we talk. Uh, that's. I'm sure I love other people too, but that's really only who I talk to. I know Shanley's out here. We don't really talk though. I mean, we, I'm sure, cause like we've seen each other around town. You'd be surprised. Hollywood's kind of a, there's like yeah. millions of people out here, but you, you run into people sometimes. Cool. Uh, real quick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here it is. This is, this is one of my last entries, I think. Yeah. For the, while we were on the show. Um, Hold on, I think this is, this is the last entry. Dear Ryan, I love you, JJ. Oh, beautiful. It says, it, says, it says, it seems so natural to be writing in here again. <laughs> and then, I'm pretty sure this is your handwriting. Ideas, smart house app. Huh, I don't, I don't think I did that one. No. That's not my handwriting, that's no, for sure. Um, but that's it. I think that's the last entry. Wow. Is, is someone wrote Ideas Smart House app? <laughs> Dude, that's okay. awesome. So last thing I'll read, unless you have any other requests from the journal. Okay. Is um, the poem from the baby shower. Oh, please, yes. Please read it. the full unedited version of your poem, the way it was meant to be heard. Watch, I'll screw it up though anyway. Yeah, you'll still make, I'll just play wacky music in front of it. <laughs> play wacky music and cut it all up so it doesn't rhyme. Fart noise, loser. <laughs> cut to other people who weren't here at all, just going. Yeah, right? What's he doing? What is this? What is he, do even though I told everyone several times, guys, I'm reading a poem. Yeah, it's like a different time. Of day. They're just using reaction shots from a different location. 
Yeah, well, they're using reaction shots from when they said, "All right, guys, um, nobody, nobody talk to each other." And they're like, "What?" Yeah, yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, that's pretty much what they did. Yeah, they're like, "All right, everybody, look real pissed for a few seconds. We're gonna use it for something. Doesn't matter what." I really don't know who. I, I don't know who I pissed off. What producer I pissed off during that time? But like, yikes! I didn't get. A, yeah, who knows? Fair shake on this one, but here we go. <clears throat> We are gathered here today because we couldn't say no to looking for love on an MTV show. Oh my God. <laughs> 20 strangers, one house, 10 girls and 10 guys quickly find out that green lasers don't lie. Ooh. With mind, heart and soul, we search for our mat, or sorry, see, there you go. Cut. Loser, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even know his poem. <laughs> With mind, heart and soul, we search for our mates. Through matchups, challenges, dozens of first dates, blindfolds, spinning bottles, fish juice and coconuts, zip lines and waterfalls, the boom boom room, night vision butts. <laughs> All of us have our own swag and own style, high walls and standards, broken hearts and denials. Mm. A perfect match is someone who's easy to love, to have and to hold, and who fits like a glove. Aww. Like uh, Chris T and Shanley made me believe that there is such a thing as love at first tat. Oh my God. Love it, love it. <laughs> Kayla likes Wes because Wes is so manly. But if we're taking bets on a fight, I'd put a million on Shanley. Nice. When Shanley flipped out, no one thought it was funny until Simone started shouting, bitch, I want my money. Simone and Joey. No. Who is that? JC. Simone and JC like to clap when they fight. <laughs> yeah, they do. Joey's so black, we can't find him at night. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. N nice, nice throw in of a, a quick... Slightly, you know, slightly racist. <laughs> Perfect. It's not, ra it's it's not slightly. racist. It's true. He's just super dark. <laughs> He's just super dark. Super dark. Um, Calicia and Dylan are cute when they're. How was that saying? Ah, Calicia and Dylan are cute when they're celibate. Oh. While Adam and Brittany just smash for the hell of it. Hey, nice. We learned more and more with each passing week, like how John is a gangster and Ashley's a geek. Oh, am I a gangster? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I know. You wore, you wore a kimono and a, and like a chain like oh, half the time. Yeah, glasses, big bandana. Yeah. 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 It'd be hard to find a girl sweeter than Jess. John slays a few dragons to get to the princess. Wow, <laughs> my, my epic line. How about that? Oh, wow. Good tie-in. Paige put her love back up on the shelf. Welcome to Scally's Kitchen. Go fuck yourself. Fuck yourself. Yeah, I remember we were all uh, chiming in for throughout this. You were killing it. Yeah, it felt like people really liked it after they got over the fact that Ryan's doing his journal poem thing. But oh, I, It was great. It was great. Everybody liked it. Dre hates journals, but loves the notebook. <laughs> and Amber caught Ethan like a fish on the hook. Aww. And the craziest thing, if you ask me, is how are you the one turned one diamond to three? Mm -hmm. And if you ask them, they might say the same. Because we all won the money, but they won the game. Aww. Because it takes more than money to have true wealth like love and, and adventure and, and good health. It's these treasures I wish you when it's all said and done. So cheers to Ethan and Amber and their new little one. Hooray, dude, that's perfect. That's a, that's a beautiful little poem, I love it. Thank you, it was, uh, you know, I had a lot of fun writing it because it was a chance for me to say something about everybody 
and a little bit of a tribute to our experience together in the house, but ultimately a, um, a tribute to Ethan and Amber who kind of, they came out of it, you know, with what, I mean, the show was intended to entertain, but ultimately it doesn't, it doesn't become a successful franchise unless people actually, unless it works, unless you can believe that people can come together and find each other through the chaos of a reality show and fall in love and have a family and have kids. And that's why we were there. And so that's why I wrote it. I wrote it because they asked me if I'd write a poem and I was like, yeah, I'd love to, but I want it to be special. You know, I don't want it to be like silly or dumb or whatever, but uh, a little bit of, a little bit of comedy, a little bit of, you know, makes you laugh, makes you cry. Um, and uh, it's a shame that no one really got to hear it all, but you, well, you, did. you heard it here. Got to redeem it today, man. You heard it here first. The world will know now that creative masterpiece. It was good, man. It was real good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, for uh, indulging me there. Oh, um, you, sure. you know, I was thinking, should I like, what the hell? The pages are gone now. Oh my God. I keep finding things in these pages. Did you find something else good? Oh my God. I signed a dollar bill. Holy shit. It's one of the dollar bills you threw in the house, oh I think. God. Wow. Dude, I... That's fucking great. I've got so much JJ swag. I'm going to, like, someday, I'm going to auction it off for charity. Hell yes. Dude. You know what I mean? That's funny. That's unreal. I'm, like, wondering what else is in, was yeah, in here. That thing's full of treasures. Uh, I have a menu from when they locked us in the hotel for the first two yeah. weeks. Remember we like quarantined for like a week? Yeah, the, yeah, we basically quarantined in the hotel. The, yeah, before, which, before it was cool. Yeah, that was a weird, uh, you know, tactic too to be like deprive them of human interaction and then overwhelm them with human interaction. Yeah, it didn't. I didn't. I was like, we would have all been just as fine if you just let us hang out on day one like whatever yeah I, I understand they didn't want us to meet and get to know each other but we didn't even really get to know each other on the show i mean we did uh, in like intimate ways but no one was i remember one of the producers came up to me and said hey how come you guys aren't asking each other like like where you're from and like what you <laughs> do and like if you have any siblings and stuff i'm like i don't know yeah. maybe because we don't feel like that stuff is interesting or whatever i don't know like yeah i don't know Maybe it's because when you come around the corner with a camera, we feel like getting to know each other isn't going to be what you want. Like, it's not going to be great TV, maybe. I don't know. But, you know, we all got to know each other in more intimate ways than that. That's for okay. sure. So do you remember, I'm sure you, did, you remember a lot of the matchup ceremonies, you would have some sort of joke or pun and it never flew. We'd always boo you, whatever it was. We're like, <laughs> boo, boo. But then the last episode, you said something <laughs> And it finally clicked and we all went crazy. And it wasn't even meant as a joke. You just had like some quick throwaway line and it got a huge reaction. And we all clapped and we're like, he did it. Ryan did it. He finally, yeah, he finally did it. Do you remember what the joke was? Oh my God. Because it was so simple. I don't remember. That's so funny though, because I remember that moment. I remember everyone finally giving me accolades for yeah. all my attempts to <laughs> yeah <laughs> you uh, know yeah but like i remember i remember one time i was remember i was i think it was when i was dressed as aladdin and uh -huh. you know i'm like trying to come up with different interesting ways to to come up with like aladdin puns but without like breaking any copy like disney copyrights sure um for infringing on them and I remember I, I came out and I I whipped them I pulled them all out and uh I sit back down and Ethan goes he's like <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> I was like that's all you were thinking about up there huh oh man good puns <laughs> I was like yeah because like whatever man this shit took like four hours to film like every time yeah we're making it we fun then we get so mad at us too because we had to pee. Oh yeah. We drink so much before hey before oh, the yeah. ceremony. Yeah, people had the fucking thing of uh, fireball on the stage. People yeah, behind the if you yeah. when you watch the show like behind each of our chairs is like a it's drink. Like, oh, yeah, people are just getting wasted throughout the whole thing. 
and then they would they wouldn't they would always just feed us pizza or something afterwards. yeah that was it after the matchup it was like pizzas are in the house there you go gosh and that shit that took everything took so long to film it and every three days was an episode yeah We'd have challenge days and days. days and then matchup ceremony days yeah and the truth booth and the dates were on the same day too so yeah was, yeah it was challenge then the next day with truth booth and the dates and like they we would do them both in, in that day but it, remember how long it would take to set up those shots oh my god yeah the the matchup ceremony they'd have like sweet it was like an eight camera shoot it was crazy <laughs> yeah like because i mean because they have a camera pretty much focused on like every other person's face just yeah for, the for so, you to go yeah just, whoa <laughs> This is, did you guys see that? Or, oh. No, fuck, damn it. Or, yeah. <laughs> That's all they needed from us. They, I, like, I was just like, I was like, why don't you just tell us to give, th you know, a few reactions. Like, re I mean, I understand, like, they didn't want to adult, you know, they wanted to be unadulterated, like, yeah. get a true raw thing, especially because it's the first show. They were like, let's just yeah. get everything. Did you know that our show had more, uh, more cameras than any other reality show in history what yeah it was like more hd camera i remember the guy told us because he was proud because he was rigging it up holy um, shit wow. like, your show has more uh, hd cameras filming at any time than any other reality show ever made how about that i was like, I was wow. like yeah that puts me at ease you know cool. <laughs> damn yeah. dude nothing was funnier than devlin activating the lasers though he'd, he'd put his hands both yeah <laughs> All right, guys, let's see. Yeah. Oh! Ah! Yeah, laser. <laughs> and it was so bright on everybody. They'd light up yeah. everyone. <laughs> I feel like he felt like God in that moment. Like, yeah. Who wouldn't? Oh, yeah. That's, that's a wild. Yeah. Like, him having to take it serious was so funny because, like, we're all goofs. We're all laughing it up, whatever. But he's got to be like, all right, tonight we're going to find out. <laughs> How many beams? We won't. And he's ex that's the best. Explain the whole rules every matchup ceremony. Yeah. We're not going to know which beams are which, but we're going to know. And we're like, yeah, yeah, we get it. We get it. God. Like, I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for the viewer yeah. who just turned in. Yeah. And then we're going to say 10 for 10, and we're going to cut that out of every episode. Yeah. Every single time we would come back and we would cheers 10 for 10. We would have all these like, <laughs> moments where we'd go around and do like speeches and songs remember the rap battles uh yeah i remember a couple rap battles I remember uh, yeah, yeah the songs uh, here we go 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 hey wow. yeah i remember oh my god oh that's like it's like uh, so good memories do. mixed with like anxiety yeah this, like this is a, this is a lot of fun, but I'm like starting to sweat a little bit. Yeah, I'm like, this is like God. A Potter when they look in that thing that has all the memories, you know? That's what, <laughs> yeah. That's oh what my gosh, I should know what it's called, but I don't. <laughs> we'll pull it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, I, I would imagine that you. I you're definitely not a Gryffindor, dude. I have no fucking not a Ravenclaw. I would say I want to say you're you're either like a Slytherin. Uh -huh. or or a Hufflepuff or like king of the Hufflepuff. Oh, that king of the Hufflepuff sounds great. Oh, I totally that. I'm fine with that. That's beautiful. Could you imagine the Could you imagine the guy like the guy who actually wanted to be a Hufflepuff when he sat down with the hat? Right. And he's like Hufflepuff, Hufflepuff. Please, please. Give me Hufflepuff, baby. We all and that's like, like hmm. Yeah, maybe Gryffindor, and you're like, no, 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 Hufflepuff. Uh, uh, HP. Yeah, we look like we could be extras in Harry Potter too. I mean, we yeah, we have a, we have a good uh, we have a pretty general mass appeal look. I think we could be in any picture, and it'd be like, yeah, sure, those guys are supposed to be there. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you've got yeah. What what are you again? What's your background? Who are you, Prince of Persia? Yeah, pretty much. Now my dad is from Egypt, okay. so I'm a I'm a first generation American here. Nice, um, very cool. My mom is like Irish English, so Did... okay. And then like and then some other stuff. So I can pretty much claim any anything really. But yeah, yeah it's like what's really cool about 
um, my situation is I'm like ambiguously color, like I have this yes. color to me. So yeah. people are like, oh, okay, like he could be like Latino or he could be like like Italian or he could be like whatever, whatever. It's cool. He he checks the box. Dude, you look yeah. like what the Kardashians wish their brother looked like. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what you look like. Yeah, yeah. It's such a great look. I, I mean, dude, I'm honestly, I can't believe you're not like an A-list leading man Hollywood actor yet. I believe it can happen. Yeah, but well, I, I just think you're such a star that like you could do anything. Thanks. Thanks, JJ. I, you know, you were always uh, probably, probably the nicest guy to me out of everybody. Um, you've yeah. always been my favorite. You're legitimately funny. Uh, you're kind you know and um you know I, I i've always said the same thing to you i'll say it again now uh i see you as as a powerhouse in comedy I, get yeah. this guy on his own netflix special and, and, I, love it. I want that so bad and I, I, I i've been saying it for a long time now you know wow. i have you, um, you believed in me from day one dude you've always you've always been right there for me i mean you uh yeah you're you're just unforgiving and unrelenting in your craft you uh you don't you don't i think that you know better than most that like it's as long as it's more funny than offensive yes then it's okay it's that's all that matters yeah is, is as you know and being offensive is part of it in fact if you're not offensive at all then maybe it's not as funny as it could be yeah but yeah. i think intention is everything like i don't mm -hmm. want to hurt anybody this is all strictly for laughs. Like I want people to laugh. So like, yeah, I would never say anything where I think it would, it's in bad taste or like, yeah, I never do anything with the intention to be mean. I remember some, I remember one joke in particular that will never be said. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember all of them, I'm sure. And yeah, they were all so good. No, but you, you actually did like, all right. So when I would, um, go to like those comedy club comedy store or, or wherever and you see those open mic nights yeah um, you know there was a lot of people trying to do stand-up stand-up's really hard probably the, the hardest you know performance art there is um because you're you're walking up in front of people who are expecting to laugh and the yeah. thing about comedy is like it's supposed to be something unexpected it's supposed to surprise you somehow and so like if you're expecting to be to laugh and then you 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 know so you're looking for the punchline. You're thinking like, is this guy funny? Come on, clown what you got, you know? Exactly. Um, when I see other people doing it, it was always like, dang, you know, that wasn't that funny and it's not that good. And it's, it was always based on preparation, I think. Like, even if someone wasn't as, like their jokes weren't as good, but you could tell they really prepared it well and they work, they put a lot of work and time and effort into it. Yeah. It came across as funnier. Like it was, you could just tell it was well-crafted for you. Yeah. Like it was like, it was like a, like a, an entree that was just very well prepared. Maybe it doesn't like taste as good as, as you know, whatever it is it could, but at least it's like a, a full complete meal that you can sit down and have. And you were always so prepared and like, you would just put in the work. And you, if you continue to do that, like, I have no doubt, Thanks. like you've been doing stuff, like everyone needs to go check out your page and your Tampa news force, which yeah. I think is I think Tampa News Force could be its own show, like on, like like Adult Swim or something. Yes. You know, where it's That's like exactly uh, what we want, dude. Like Adult Swim would be so perfect for Tampa News Force. Like it's yeah, everything's been working out with it. The content is so funny. I stand behind everything we make. So like yeah, I love what I'm doing. I'm proud of my work, and I'm just gonna yeah, I'm just trying as hard as I possibly can every day. I mean, even this right now, it's fun to talk with friends. But also, we're trying to be productive, baby. We're putting something out for the world. We're opening yeah. ourselves to the world. We're being vulnerable. We're being honest. This, yeah. this is all it's about, dude. People want to know who we are. What's what's the deal? Yeah, for everyone for everyone who's still with us, you know, yeah, throughout I mean, this you're hour still long. Here. I don't even know how long we've been talking, but I know. Yeah, let uh, me check my thing. Yeah, we've been on for an hour twenty now. Wow. Okay. This is a 90 minute, a 90 minute special. Beautiful. Yeah. The 90 yeah. minute John and Ryan special. Yeah. And you know, who knows, who knows what else we have to bring. I mean, you know, we're, we're here talking about this now because it's relevant and it's, yeah. you know, it's, 
you know, this show just dropped on Netflix and a lot of people are checking it out for the first time. A lot of people are watching it again because, you know, it's been a long time since it's been out and, you know, and it's, it's just as, you know, new and fresh for us um, in, in revisiting it. So it's fun for us to talk about it and stuff. Yeah. It's kind of feels like, of course, this is kind of shameless self-promotion in a way, because we're trying to like, you know, but at the same time, it's really open and honest, like, all right, fine. You just threw our show on Netflix. Well, let's talk about it. Let's exactly. give at least our, you yeah. know, thing. We can, yeah, we um, can do everything we can. And it's kind of, if that, you... <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're doing what we can with what we're given. Hey, you know, it's, it's like, we're going to have to, it, it'd be, it would be strange to just completely avoid it. You know, it's like, yeah. oh yeah. It, you know, it was a big part of our lives, um, you know, it, years of, of, of our lives pretty much, you know. Um, I mean, we filmed for a couple months and then it was airing for like a few months the next year. And then the next year or two, I mean, it completely changed. Half the people moved out to LA, you know, I was one of them. Yeah. You were one of them. Yeah. You know, it changed people's lives. People got married, people had kids. I mean, yeah. the show was a significant chapter in our lives and then here and then and then here we go again in a in a yeah, new again. here we go again so i mean uh, yeah, how few people in the world ever have a tv show on netflix that's crazy i mean yeah at it's, this point, it's, it's like half the population but still <laughs> yeah i was gonna say yeah quite a bit no no it's cool it's 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 unique it's it's special um it's uh it's mortifying yeah. i mean it's very it's very uh it's like you know, it's like a duality. It's like two sides of a coin. I have very mixed feelings about it, especially because as a as a reality uh, star or personality, um, people don't necessarily see you in the light of being like a serious artist or an actor. Yeah. You know, they because especially I mean, not may, maybe maybe it's for the behavior that you that you sure. portray or whatever. But yeah. but more more so, it's that people seem to feel like they know you as a person more intimately. Yeah. And if you, you, you see a person, you know, like their name and who they are. And when you feel like, you know, them, when you see them in a TV show or a movie, you're seeing that person, you're not seeing the character that they're trying to portray. Um, so it's been, you know, after a few years after the show, when I started doing castings, you know, uh, at first people, you know, casting people would be like, Oh, Ryan, yeah, MTV's Ryan. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. I was like, yeah, but Right. I know. Today right. I'm, uh, you know, yeah. Jimmy from, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a stigma in general because just the genre of reality is kind of automatically classified as like trashy. There, like there's, there's, yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's no. Yeah, real it, doesn't necess- it doesn't necessarily take a lot of talent to be a reality star, but it does take a certain type of personality. It takes yeah. a a certain type of person and 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 definitely a certain skill set like if you're going to be on a reality show you have to be a good interviewer or interviewee yeah. yes like because the difference between the main difference between a, like a documentary series and a reality series is the subjects are the narrators in a reality show so oh. in, in a documentary series they would be watching us and they'd be going like, you know some some <laughs> guy or some producer would be being like oh so you know jj approached simone with a wad of cash and, <laughs> Some you know, all the channel. Yeah, but in a reality show, you pull them aside a few days later and you have them say what just happened in as if it's happening in, in present tense. Yeah. So I walk up to Simone with a wad of cash and you know, hey, yeah, yeah. you have to be good at experiencing life and retelling what you've experienced. Yeah, you have to be a an interesting. You have to be an interesting person with a certain kind of energy. And yes. you have to be able to be a good narrator who who can tell good stories uh-huh. in a concise way. I mean, here we are going 90 yeah. minutes, but you have to be able to tell a moment in under 10 seconds yeah. when you're on a show like that. Yeah. So not everyone can do it, but still there is a stigma. There's a, oh, you did this. That means you're not a serious, yeah. you know, artist. Oh. And so for me, getting kind of away from Are You The One was beneficial in advancing my career as an actor and a writer and, you know, being taken more seriously. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping that this coming back doesn't like hinder me at all. And being like, Oh, Oh, you're the guy from the reality show on Netflix. Like, no, no, thank you. We want a serious actor. I mean, that's, that's something that I was concerned about. Yeah. 
but there's nothing I can do about it. Right. So and I, I think it'll help. I think it'll help. Cause I mean, even if people have that stigma, it's like, you know, no press is bad press, baby. Like fucking it's, it's notoriety. People are looking at you. We're on people's minds right now. It's, it's a weird thing. I feel like I can feel it. You ever have a feeling yeah. where you're like, I feel like at this moment, people around the country, around the world are watching us do something, which is weird. Yeah. It's great. It's, it, it is cool in, in the sense that I, sometimes I get messages from people who say that, yeah, like they were, they were really entertained or they loved it, but, but more so sometimes I'll get messages like, you know, about the journal stuff, you know, they'll say, you know, how vulnerable you were and how, how you, I thought I was the only one who like keeps a journal and, and right. you know, it really has gotten me through a lot and, and watching you guys and watching you um, has really, you know, helped me, you know, with my confidence about what I'm doing or whatever it is, you know, it helps them get through something. I think that's really special. So for, for everything that's, for everything that's happening and that we had to go through, if people can watch us and laugh or, you know, uh, be, relate to it in some way that helps them grow or, you know, helps them like de-stress after a long day, whatever it is, um, you know, then we, then I'm proud that we did it. Yeah, the end of the day. Uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely think the show brought a lot of joy to people, like way more joy than it would make people sad. And like, you know, I don't know why it would make people sad. <laughs> You know, if, uh, I mean, it, if, it could have gone a lot of different ways. Um, you know, not everyone got painted in the best light. Right. You know, towards the end there with the specials and stuff, I was, I felt like I was being raked through the coals a little bit. Um, right. And, uh, you know, of course that makes me feel a certain way, but, but I, you know, I, got, I feel like I got off pretty easy when it comes to being painted. I mean, there was people, you know, in the house that didn't really get a fair shake or whatever. I mean, the thing is like, it's a double-edged sword too there because, you are only really your behavior is captured on camera now it can be manipulated and they could edit it in a different way or put it like later in the season it's like i did that on the first day and they're making yeah. it sound like look like i did it you know two months later yeah. so that can be manipulated but at the same time it's like but you did say that and you did do that kind of thing so it's like you, yeah. it's like taking responsibility but also understanding that it was crafted and it's not it's not reality, okay, people. It's a uh, we were put in a bubble with cameras on us twenty four seven. It was not a real life situation. Like it was a show that was made to entertain you. We were sitting there for three hours on a couch while some people set up some cameras, not talking to each other. Yeah, I remember they even yelled at us for playing chess. <laughs> I'd like make a move, and I'd be like, "Ooh," and they'd be like, "Quiet!" And I'm like, "That's great." <laughs> Yeah. Come on. It was tough. It was stressful. It was hard work. It was exhausting. Yeah. I, I definitely got respect for people who do reality after us doing it because yeah. Yeah, I mean, you forget about the whole 24 hour thing. Dude, you know, Tom Cruise between takes gets to go into a trailer and a boy massages him or something. Like we, <laughs> we had to just, we're shitting on GoPros. You know what I mean? Like, they're, oh man remember when you go to the bathroom all mic'd up and you'd be like <laughs> dude you remember they'd have handles of liquor in the bathroom too oh there was booze everywhere everywhere booze in every room it was i think at, i think at one point though like was it i think no it was when you threw the watch through the window okay which was awesome hell yes uh that they the next I think after that, or was it after? Was it after Kayla had her uh, incident, or there was at some point they pulled all hard liquor. Oh really? Yeah, they were like only beer. That's yeah. That's that's for, for the like, next for the next few days. Yeah, only beer and like no hard liquor. Like they pulled it all, and they. But I think I think after like they said that, and then like a day later it was all back because they're like okay. Yeah. We need you guys to. We need you trashed to make need, TV. because you'd only have three days for an episode. Like we need you to be drunk at least one or two of those days. Yes, like a hundred percent. So it, yeah, it was. Uh, it wasn't real life. Um, there was no. 
there's no way to consider that reality. Yeah, but none of those circumstances are realistic. No, no. It was a, it was an experiment. We were guinea pigs. Yeah, and, pretty much. And because we're all, you know, they found us as, you know, these these characters in the wild of of the, you know, the world, the world. Yeah, pretty all around America. Yeah. Because they did a, a good job finding us as characters, it ended up being something that had legs. And now we have, we have, are you the one season eight? Who knows how many seasons we have it now on Netflix? We have, are you the one Brazil? Like all these other countries have their own version of our show. And um, we invented it. We started it. Well, well, we, yeah, it's like, it's hard to take, it's hard to take too much credit, but it is fun to take some, like, I mean, hey, we're, we're the first cast. People remember the first real world, you know? Like, yeah. remember the first of whatever it is. In, like, 50, 100 years, and they're looking back on, you know, these these reality series, you know, the first Survivor, the first Are You the One, the first real world. It's kind of cool to be a part of the OG. It is. Uh, season of something that has been such a cultural... I remember, I remember I knew that it was something special when Are You the One made a... It was like a... A robot chicken made a, a sketch about it. Yeah, they did. That was yeah. crazy. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. We've broken through some kind of cultural significance. Yeah, we're where acknowledged. Our yeah, our 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 shit. Yeah, we're we're a thing, dude. We were we were a real show. We did it. We did it. We did it. You know, and you went on the challenge. I did. Yeah. Went to do the challenge. Yeah, that was much different. Completely different. Like, I remember, did they, um, did you go once or twice? Just once. Just once? Yeah, one and done. Such a shame. Get I, in, get I, out. I wasn't controversial enough, dude. I was just peaceful. You were funny, though. I didn't care. Yeah, I was bummed funny. to see you I go. I remember I watched to support because Brittany, we, I was living with Brittany at the time. She was on it with you, right? Brittany? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, afterwards, they wanted they asked me a couple times to be on the challenge it didn't work out for whatever reason but um and then i was asked to be on i remember i was asked to be on the bachelorette oh wow you would have been perfect for that i didn't do it because at the time i was i was just auditioning and then sure enough i booked reality high so i'm like i'm glad i didn't yeah well that's good um, you got a better gig but you can always go yeah, but uh also i was like if i do another if i do another dating show i'm just gonna be like the dating show guy like yeah, but you know, Bachelorette, the, at least, like, people see that as, like, you know, the top one or whatever for, like, love dating shows. Well, it would have to go, I would have to be, like, The Bachelor for it to be, like, the top. But, you you know, in order to be The Bachelor, you got to, like, you have to make it to, like, the final few and then not win and then yeah. be a fan favorite. And then, you know, so, like, a lot of things have to go right. And at the time, I was like, I still want to do theatrical work and, like, like scripted work. Um, sure. Because once you go that route, you can't really go the other route. Yeah, um, yeah. If you get too deep into it, then you're kind of... And then X on the Beach, remember that show? Uh -huh, X on the Beach. I almost got on that. Did you? Yeah, they were going to put me on with Simone. And uh, oh. Simone didn't want to do it. And also, like, it sounded like there was some sort of miscommunication. Because, like, they asked her about her ex, and she said John, and they thought it was me. So they just started, like, casting me on the show. <laughs> but then, yeah, ultimately... Simone, I, she said she dropped out and didn't want to do it, so I just didn't get in. They didn't tell me who, who my ex would have been. Okay. But they're like, there is a girl who is your ex who's, who's we want to, you know, we can't tell you. Cool. I remember I was like, what show is this, by the way? And he's yeah. like, well, it may or may not be <laughs> yeah. a show about ex relationships, and it may or may not take place on a beach. Right. And I was like, it was just like that, yeah. Like, and I was like, bro, I was like, this isn't, this, you know, we, you know, come on, just be level with me. At this point, like, it's, you know, you can just tell, you can just tell me. Yeah, you can just tell me. Lay it out, tell me the facts, what, what are we doing here? You know, at this point, I can just go ahead and do the job. Like, I can do the job if you need me, but like, tell me what the job is, though, first. Yeah, please. Um, but who knows? Maybe we'll end up on some kind of show together in the future, hopefully. I think we uh, were, maybe we'll sit down together one day and do some kind of like back and forth, you know, like over Zoom or some kind of podcast. I can see it. I can see it. Something for, uh, let's see, for an hour 34. Jesus. It's, it doesn't feel like a, a second over a minute, huh? 
Well, it definitely feels like there's there's been a lot to discuss and talk about, and we could probably go for a lot longer. I, I would imagine that there's so much more. There's all these memories and you know insights about our experience that have never really been said before. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> I will tell you that I haven't seen the show again. I had an old roommate who bought me uh, Are You the One season one on DVD. Yeah, you said you kept it wrapped and everything. Yeah, I told him, he's like, oh, I figured we could all watch it together. And I was like, you figured it wrong. I'm not going to watch that show right now. And uh, I was like, it's going to be in mint condition. Just yeah, that's going to be in the museum right next to the dream journal. Right next to the journal. Hey, do you think I should like, like sell some journals online or something? Like, oh, definitely. Dude, like dude Ryan's... sell that dream journal like a piece at a time, each one of those nights or whatever. People would love that. Oh, man, that'd be great. I was thinking about maybe doing coming out with my own line of journals, do like a ryansjournal.com or something. Yes, 100%. You know, do some like, get some kind of thing going. Maybe I will. I don't know. You we'll should. Well, and you know what you should? You should come out with, uh, you should sell dollar bills. I should. Get get bills that you can throw on chicks who are fighting. Official Official make it rain money. Well, I'll sell people already broken watches that you can chuck at windows. <laughs> All of the fun, none of the guilt. Hold on. Let me, yeah, let's. Do you have it? Oh, do I have it? <laughs> do you have a whole, do you have a whole like. Here she is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> big, big and gold, man. Let's see. Uh, what time did it die on? 3.15. Is that 3.15 a.m.? 3.15, maybe. <laughs> yeah, 3.15, number two, whatever month that one had been. I don't know. But yeah, this is the, this is the fucking... There it is. Magical piece. I'll break Dude. the fucking computer with this shit. I swear, if there's ever like a reality TV museum... Yeah, like a pawn show bringing in reality <laughs> shit. <laughs> That'll be in there. This journal would be in there. 100%. What else would be in there? Um, Dre's dick when he got naked. They have that. <laughs> oh my god! Like his yeah. his wedding ring. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, yeah. Uh, maybe like um, Chris's labyrinth tattoo. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> like, like dried out and stretched out. <laughs> okay. We're getting we're getting on the we're we're in the closet now. We're on the floor. No, we're, we've been in the closet the whole time, Ryan. Little did they know. Well, they and suspected. They suspected. <laughs> but they never knew for sure. You never knew for sure. Well, it's it. Yeah, this has, been, this has been perfect. I think this has been a, a wonderful, a wonderful talk. A wonderful uh, interaction. It really, has. It really I, has. I think the world is now a, a richer place because of it. So, yes, the world is a better place because of this talk we just had. I think so. Bring and, it to uh, Peace and I'm, joy. It's a nice combo. Slaying dragons. Boys. Yeah, we're going to do it again real soon. And uh, yeah, now I'm going to get ready to uh, do my first ever Instagram live at nine o'clock. I'm going to see how that goes. Okay, dude. Uh, I think that I'm going to watch that. But I also think that you can... Yeah, can I add people in there somehow? Yeah, like if I hop in, I think if you can you add in, in. I'll totally put you in there. Let's 100%. do it, man. That'd be We'll, just get, we'll be like, we just talked for an hour and a half. We're still going. <laughs> like, ask us anything. Ask us anything, dude. And if they ask us anything that we answered in this, we'll just refer to the video. No, we'll check back. Pay oh, we answered that. that in the Patreon page. Yeah, yeah, we said that. that. Oh, man, yeah, dude, please join me. If we could get even more people, that'd be even funnier. Up to, fucking everybody get in here. We're having a reunion on live we, right now. We have tens and tens of people. Oh, that'd be so great. <laughs> well, well, well um so i would like to say <clears throat> thank you john jacobs for being who you are and uh for having me on the, it was a great idea to get together and talk it was a great idea and uh yeah you I guys appreciate you being here with me i appreciate you giving me the time man yeah keep keep on the lookout you're gonna do big things I'm going to hopefully go do big things and everyone watching. Um, thank you. No for doubt. Yeah, we're both going to, yeah, this is going to be one of those things they see in 15 years and they go, wow, those, those guys were buddies all the way back then. And they're both superstars. Wow. They're like, they're like, uh, 
the like the guys from Freaks and Geeks that you know met yeah. on, on that show and became super yeah, yeah. Seth Rogen and and is it yeah. cool to talk about James Franco anymore? <laughs> I like James. Oh yeah, I forgot you look kind of like James Franco. Yeah, you got that look. I. I, someone said that the other day, but then someone else said, oh, no, 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 don't talk about James Franco. Uh, 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 Ryan, you look more like Matt Dillon. I was like, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, okay. yeah you definitely like, We can't talk about James Franco anymore. And I wasn't totally aware or savvy oh, as to why, but. Too conscious, too conscious for James Franco, Jesus. Hopefully this video never gets controversial somehow. I don't think it will. There's nothing, we said nothing. We said nothing. Him. Nothing. It's a whistle. This could air on fucking PBS Family. This yeah, fuck, fucking PBS. PBS, baby. <laughs> it's basically PBS. About the same budget. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, actually probably nicer equipment on this than PBS. But, oh, yeah. I, I got like a light. Yeah, I got a light. I got a mic over here. It's going to sound pretty good. Cool. Well, yeah, man. We got to look into podcasting. It's going to yeah, be fun. We're going to make it happen. The ones. To, the to, real the ones <laughs> the ones the ones yeah the real the real house bros of america yeah from coast to coast man cali to florida we're doing there you it. go cool man well yeah great talking to you i'll see you on instagram live appreciate everything man keep doing your thing all right man thank you you too Love you